Welcome back to our lecture series, Linear Algebra Done Openly. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. This is the first video for section 2.4 in our textbook entitled Affine Geometry. Now, before we get into the details here, I do want to kind of specify that when you take your typical algebra class, like whether that's in high school, um, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, or sometimes they're called elementary algebra, intermediate algebra, uh, and then there's like a college algebra as well. Now we're in linear algebra. These classes, although they're called algebra classes, they're not purely algebra classes. There is so much emphasis placed on geometry. Uh, algebras 1, 2, and 3 often focus on functions. We talk about the graphs of functions. Uh, we graph circles and ellipses and hyperbolas and all these other uh, other graphs that come from equations and things like that. So uh, this is often what's referred to as analytic geometry, which is essentially studying geometry from from, from using algebraic equations and algebraic functions and, and the like, right? But when you take these, these high school algebra or college algebra classes, they really ought to be called high school algebra and geometry, college algebra and geometry. Uh, the reason that schools often avoid that terminology is they don't want you to confuse you with like a proof-based uh, geometry class, which is often taught in high school, where you have like postulates about lines and planes and things like that. Uh, that's sort of like separate than the analytic geometry. But sure enough, they are, the algebra and the geometry are kind of married together. And you have to study the two things together to kind of better understand one another, right? The algebra supports the geometry, but the geometry supports the algebra. Linear algebra is no exception in that regard. A better name for this series would be uh, linear algebra and geometry done openly, right? Because we can't divorce the geometry from the linear algebra either. And so in this section, I want to introduce sort of like the most primitive type of geometry, which you can expect on a vector space. And this is referred to as affine geometry. And so in this lecture, we're going to talk about things which we call affine sets, or just more simply, we're going to call them flats. And this is going to in many ways mimic uh, the geometry we see in Rn when we talk about things like points, lines, planes, etc. And so what is a flat? A flat, or again, these are sometimes called affine sets if we want to be a little bit more proper. These are first of all subsets of Fn. So they flats live inside of Fn, but we are looking for things which are congruent to Fm itself where M can fluctuate between zero and N right here. So congruent, right? This is a ge geometric term, right? Congruence is when you have a shape that is the same as some other shape. So like, you know, I mentioned that high school geometry class, you often obsess about things like these two triangles congruent by the side angle side condition and things like that, right? Even though the two triangles could be located in different places in the plane or in space, they have different vertices that determine the triangles. The two triangles are essentially the same thing because they have the same shape, like the angles are the same, the side measurements are the same. This is what one means by congruence, that the two geometric objects are really the same thing. So an affine set is just supposed to be a set that is congruent to the vector space inside of the larger vector space. So like case in point, if you think of R2, right? R2 we think of as the real plane where we have like the x-axis and the y-axis and every point in the plane is just a point. You know, it can be determined by its x and y coordinates. What does one mean by a line? A line like you see the blue one illustrated here on the screen, a line is just an object in the plane that looks like R1. What is R1? R1 would basically be the x-axis right here. The x-axis is a line. The y-axis is a line. This line we draw here is a line. And so a line is just things that look like the x-axis um, inside, of the, inside of sort of like this larger space. Uh, backing up a little bit, let's think about like R3 for us for a moment, right? If we were doing R3 geometrically, we might think of it as like we have the x-axis, we have the y-axis, and we have the z-axis. Maybe we draw something like this, right? Uh, I guess I guess I take that back. That doesn't follow the right-hand rule, does it? Uh, we would want something. We want to switch those things around, don't we? Where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Because now when you use the right-hand rule that we've oriented that correctly. Sorry about that. But if we have like the x, y, and z axis, then your point, your points in space, you know, they're just things like this. But what is a line? 
what does a line in this situation like before a line is going to be something that looks like the x-axis what is a plane by a plane we mean you know this object that kind of looks like r2 although it might be floating somewhere else in space a a flat is just a plane it's just something that looks like r2 that's what we mean by flats uh are these affine sets and so what we're going to do is try to describe flats uh in a general setting where our vector spaces might not be over the real numbers we could do this over the complex numbers over our finite fields or any other field that we could introduce but we're not going to in this series so let's see what we mean by flats in this situation